series. UST one point away from winning it all. UI has to win this game to survive. All right, the drafting has begun. Let's see. I mean, they don't really ban out Michael, but I feel like he's not the biggest reason why Salvari Nari are having a difficult time here. Yes, he has been everywhere at the very start of the game, but if you think about it, Tamsu has yet to challenge his counterpart in the jungle. Where is this um, this this mm. point, this point man for Salvari Nari? He's been in the jungle for such a long time during game number one and game number two, and we haven't really seen him, um, you know, really pop off at the very start of this game. Now we're seeing just very standard bands from both of these sides. Yeah, if you look at uh, the picks and bands way, way, way back on uh, the previous uh, rounds in the Esports Academy Arena, uh, Michael has been playing Hecarim and Olaf consistently, so it makes me wonder what if they ban Olaf and Hecarim and then just mm. see from there what will Michael play this time? Will it be will he be forced in an, in an uncomfy situation? But looking back at the bans, it's going to be standard Jarvan 4 and as well as Rek'Sai can removing uh, tanky yet explosive in terms of damage well not tanky but you get what i mean here uh on towards tamsu so he's forced to either go back to his kha'zix go back to his elise and maybe he can use hecarim himself but that camille though i wonder where that's gonna go lucian on the other hand is one of uh the picks of Corosso in the top side of the map i highly doubt he's gonna use it uh this time around maybe it will be uh it will be used by a crit again but at least you take out the Aurelia, which has been a very, very uh, key pick for either Pau or Sarah. At least you will remove two flexes. I mean, remove one flex. I mean, I just have to point this out here. It seems like there's been a shift of playstyle on both top laners mm. on these teams, wherein uh, Corozo has been that guy who loves to pick uh, champions such as Aurelia, such as maybe even this Camille, you know, basically those 1v1 champions. And Pau has been the one who likes the utility-based top laners or the spellcasting top laners, but it seems like the roles have shifted or the mindsets have shifted as Pau is not on, now on that type of uh, split-pushing carry role, and it's working so well for the Teletigers. Now, will they bring back Corrosive's old formula and try to challenge uh, Pau here on that Camille? We'll have to see. I mean, this could go to crit, but I feel like this is a top lane illusion. We'll have to see, I but if they lock in this Fiora or Rakan, okay, Rakan is actually good. They Azaya is open, so it will be really, really good if they lock that both in. Uh, but right now, it's going to be the banning phase. They will be banning uh, either their AD carry. Uh, I might ban a Pike. I want to. Oh, never mind. Braum is already there. Camille's already there. So never mind. So. I guess there's a lot open for mid lane and as well as their AD carry. Uh, but Akali will be taken out. Of course, it has been used by Sarah earlier. Pretty, pretty painful. LeBlanc, understandable for Chote. I think LeBlanc is one of the scariest picks by Chote. Crit for Saya. We'll see if USC decides to ban Saya here uh, in this banning phase. They might want to find somebody that combos well with the Braum. That's why I believe they got the Lucian pick immediately because it's a it's a strong laner. He's really, really good in dueling once you have that Blade of the Ranking or even maybe even the Build Warrior Cutlass. Yeah. And it combos so well with the Braum's uh, concussive That's blows. True. That's true. So you kind of take away that kill pressure from UST and at the same time you have yourself a really solid pick. But it might lose against Len, who does like to pick those long-range uh, type of champions. Oh, yeah. But I've seen a Lucian deal with these guys very very easily yeah that's true i mean silver is actually works well with uh with rom because you have the auto attack that's resets true. on the animation so auto attack uh, ricochet or boomerang or whatever you just swap a rooney but yep looks like that's gonna be a top solution oh. if they do lock the zaya in we did mention zaya is one of the best picks for crit and if they do lock this in yep so the mind games is there that's the reason why they didn't ban zaya because they thought maybe lucian is going to be uh, in the bottom lane, but looks like we are having a do it, uh, do or die uh, draft from yeah. UI. This might stagger some of the uh, viewers watching, but Lucian in the top lane, solo top Lucian is actually one of the few ADCs that can do just that. And of course we're going to, of course you can't leave Rakan alone, you got to give him his OTP, his one true pairing, it's the uh -huh. Saya guys. But like you said, the Sivir does combo well with the Braum, it's going to be the ADC for UST. And the final pick here, possibly going to be the mid lane, gives Sarah something. Could be again in the Sonder, never mind, it's actually been banned out. 
Oh, Ooh, they're going explosive here with the cannon pick uh, towards the mid lane. Uh, at this point, what are your choices for the mid lane? Uh, if I love Chote played Oriana before, I think I think they need utility here. I think they need something that would help um, get those shields in, just not purely overwhelm people with damage because you do have that burst. I don't think Rakan is enough, but it looks like oh. uh, rather Chote is going to go with okay. Vladimir instead. Teacher, teacher, can I raise my hand? Yes, Bo, yes. <laughs> I mean, yes, student. Anyways, look at the composition from... So very nary, three ADCs in one comp. Yeah. I have not seen this in such a long time. We're gonna have a Graves in the jungle, a Lucian in, in the mid lane actually, and then an ADC Zaya. This is unprecedented. This is, like you said, lots of damage, but not a lot of utility. So it's gonna be scary on how they deal uh, with the team fights, which is basically overflowing from the Teletiger side. It's going to be a very scary matchup for Lucian on the Camille. Uh, Sarah versus Chote. Uh, I can imagine it's going to be difficult once Camille reaches level 6, most especially uh, with the sweeps. But there's, there's the swap. It's not going to be a Camille versus Lucian. It's going to be Lucian versus Kennen, uh, which is the same uh, concept. Uh, very scary once level 6. You can just immediately get that stun and get the trade, then the stun, and get a huge amount of burst. And... Uh, and no, and of course you're going to be carrying a teleport, so that's one yes utility on the battlefield. It's more of a uh, a map, um, map utility. So it's going to be very difficult for Lucian in the top side for me. Yeah, I'm super looking forward to well, super. Anyway, super. the Graves and Olaf matchup in the jungle because uh, at least from what I've experienced before, I feel like Graves should win this duel if he can play around. The first undertow of Olaf. If Olaf picks up his his axe once again, he'll be able to draw an undertow, and Graves might be in a bit of uh, a dire situation there. But before that, Graves can deal such a good damage with his combo output on his um, Q and E, so that that should at least shook or shake uh, Michael's posi positioning here. And it's gonna be again something to look forward to because you don't see a Graves and Olaf too much nowadays. Uh, the Vladimir Camille. It, Seems very iffy, but I feel like it should be Vladimir winning that. That's true. That's absolutely true. Uh, well, if he manages to survive the early phase, he's going to be a monster uh, during the later phases of the game. It's going to be a headache for all of the members of USG. But one thing that I want to point out is that, yes, Olaf has always been open. And one of the things that's scary about Olaf is that, of course, he is... Um, not vulnerable to all of these hard CCs once Ragnarok is activated. So how do you counter that? It's with mobility. So you've got Lucian, Graves, uh, Vladimir, one Zaya as well with the Feather Storm. Rakan can just double you on towards his members. But the funny thing is they have Sivir on the hunt. So that will just mitigate all their mobility to avoid the Olaf once he activates uh, the Ragnarok and just rushes towards you. And then we'll amplify the on, the on the hunt, really amplifies everything as well. So you have the cannon, so you have the slicing maelstrom, that's going to be very, very painful with the movement speed. So it's just a full-on team fight with a little bit of duo and a little bit of skirmish. And that's why USD has a really good composition. UI doesn't have the best balance in the world, but they're all pulling in towards all of these uh, damage heavy picks and it has to work they have to win the laning phase for it to actually transition well for them and make it happen but they have a lot of burst so that means they have a good you know pick potential as well the win conditions for salvari nari here are very very i would say difficult to achieve they uh -huh. need to be able like you said to win the lanes they need to be able to not fall behind because adcs that fall behind really tend to well lose that matchup, especially when they don't have somebody to give them that support. There's not a lot of support here for the slice of Varinari. I mean, Rakan can sure use his ultimate to maybe create some space, but you said it already. There's so much gap close. There's so much crack control. There's so much um, anti-CC that the side of Teletigers have that it's going to be such a tough time. And I don't know why Salvari Nari actually put this big hurdle, this mountain for them to climb over in order for them to win, but maybe it's it's something that they played before. Maybe it's something that they're comfortable with that we haven't seen yet. Yes, sir. I absolutely agree with your point about the anti CC part, and also there's anti damage part with the uh, with the Brom shield. Imagine there's 380 carries, and the shield is just the perfect formula, uh, the addition to the formula rather here on pressure on the Brom. Yeah, and now let's get into the Rift game. 
number three, the final one for the Teletigers, or is it going to be another or a win here, the first possible win for Salvare Nari? We've only have to hope, guys. Again, this is game number three, USD Teletigers versus UI Salvare Nari. Is it going to be the final game? Or are we going to see a game number four, maybe even a game number five? I don't know, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm sure UI has learned from these past two games. They did not ban the Olaf because, you know, we faced uh, the Olaf pick by Michael before uh, in this series. And I'm pretty sure we have already, not, me not exactly memorized, but we may read the movements of UST, especially in the early game, super detrimental uh, on how UI can be able to make this composition work because it's just full on damage a little bit of yeah. utility here and Shote would definitely want to get ahead because uh, most of the time either you want to wait or you want to snowball so for Shote perhaps maybe he wants to wait but for Thompson once he reaches level 6 he wants to take advantage of all of these damage sources with you know Korosu we have got uh, crit as well so I'm looking forward to all of these uh, of this game, most particularly. The tendencies that we've seen a lot from uh, USC Teletigers, at least at the at the very basic of them, is that they really love to play around that early to mid game. They try to get as much advantage as they can, and when they do, they really have that vice grip. They don't stop at all in creating advantages for themselves this earlier on, and it shows how good they are at it. On the mm. other scale of the spectrum here, with uh, Salvari Nari, they do a lot more, a lot better when they have Tamsu so again in the driver's seat. But once Ooh. he isn't, it might be a bad opportunity for them. But you can see here, it's the five man death rush. What's gonna happen? Let's see if they can go for that invade. Yeah, they're looking for the bottom lane. My bomb into crit and Kenzo. Oh. No wards. No wards spotted at all. They have no idea that this is coming. But crit and Kenzo playing <laughs> very, very safe here. The question now is, uh, how how deep is USD going to commit to this and not recall back into their lanes? Because if you can look at it, uh, they will have to force a TP on Pal for him to get back into the top lane or recall immediately, which is what they're going to do. Crit and Kenzo going to play the safe game and go around their own side of the uh, clock of four here so that they don't get okay. caught. But, oh, Crit, oh, it's, oh, my, my struggling. Uh. <laughs> It's there they are, there they are! Chasing it down, goes for it, forces the flash, okay, gets the one. But should be able to get away, only forcing crit's flash, but that is a crucial flash, mind you that. I think that was pretty okay, uh, if you ask me. Lucian will actually go, Corosa will switch up to the mid lane for probable better matchup here. And uh, a little bit of hope for Tamsu, so that, uh, what do you call this? Wow. Uh, what do you call, what well, the Sit well? Yeah, sorry. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's like, it's a, I think it's a good probe, so at least uh, it slows down his jungling a little bit, even though it's uh, not as significant, but you were saying, you said, wow. Sorry, it was a counter jungle, if you see where Tamsu is, so he's getting the move off. Yes. That's, so that's a really smart move, you know, because they see that, you know, USD can't really uh, answer this. So, uh, Salvari Nari making a lot more use of this one, but will it be vertical jungling? We'll just have to see. Yep, Suri, uh, no, uh, they, I mean, it, uh, USD has already spotted the blue buff take, so most likely uh, Olaf will, uh, Michael will try to get the blue buff of the enemy jungle, but anyways, uh, looking back at the warding, wait, hold that thought, I thought there was going to be a, a significant trade here, but that's just uh, the uh, USC winning that one, as uh, Korosu will now stay in the mid lane, so just a little update, Chote will now switch sides, uh, he's now on the top side of the map, so... Um, magic versus magic this time, so it's not gonna be a swap of Rooney like 80 versus 80. So I think um, it really helps uh, with the build. Wait, hold on. Now there's gonna be a dash resolution there. Well, while I was, that was happening in the bottom lane, Len actually forcing himself to use that deal. There's a lot engaged from the Saya and from Han, and they're able to force back or even force a crucial summoner spell from Len. But this does push them to actually overextend. Crit now getting spun oh. up. He could actually get one more hit, and that's gonna be it. No flash for this man, and that's gonna be a first blood taken here by Len. They overextend and could even get a second kill here if they try to commit onto Kenzo. Missing their skill shots, but that was. The first blood once again. 
for the USD Teletigers. Job well done by USD. Uh, the timing was perfect. Michael was just around anyway. So now UI was overextended into the lane. They did really want to finish off the kill. At least they burned summoner spells. All of the summoner spells of bot side. Actually, now that I look at it, even UI as well. So that's going to be a very vulnerable lane if Michael decides to visit or maybe comes to. But I'm pretty sure he wants the power farm reach level 6 as fast as he can because uh, all the lanes are pretty much just on a farm, perhaps. And uh, at this point of the game, uh, we, we see the AD carry of USD going back. We'll see what he is going to buy. Probably just going to recuperate some more pickaxe first. And meanwhile, Long started a bunch of biscuits. So, well, Len will oh, win this back. He doesn't have flash anymore. He could actually... All he has W. <laughs> he has the dash. He has the dash. <laughs> there was actually... I just want to point out, there was actually a moment in time here where it could have actually gone really, really well for Salvari Nari, wherein uh, Michael was in a really weird situation where Karosu was pushing up into the lane and he couldn't uh, get that blue buff on the other side, on the uh, jungle side of Salvari Nari here. But because... Grit and Kanzo overextended into that bottom lane. He's like, I can't get anything here. But when he spotted his two members out, he's like, okay, never mind. Let's just go into the bottom lane. And it should have been a really good start for Tamsu, but it became bad because Crit and Kenzo were a bit too overcommitted to that bottom lane uh, push. That's right. Managed to equalize the trade at least to get a kill over one of the buffs will uh, spawn later on. Meanwhile, Kurosu and Sarah, they're looking pretty good. Koroso most especially having a uh, CS lead, almost 20 plus CS lead here. So it's understandable. It's a range versus a melee matchup. So it's quite difficult, especially uh, in the early phases of the game. If you play it well from level 1 to level 6, you harass them as much as you can. Every chance you get and not get, uh, not get traded back, then that is the perfect opportunity to at least slow the growth of Sarah on the Camille. But Take note, Camille is just super duper useful in skirmishes, especially if ever, for example, uh, Kurosu goes back and uh, Sarah has the time to roam, and it's going to be very scary for, for Crit uh, in particular. Yeah, as at the moment, he doesn't have level 6 yet, so mm. it's going to just be a tough time for him. But it seems like with Kenzo, he should be able to play safe a little bit here. Kurosu putting a bit more vision around his opponent's side. Uh, we'll go on to Michael here, Ooh. does have the trigger green, comes to right oh. behind him. A little bit of that pause. Let's see what's gonna happen. Jason sit down. All right, Sarah okay. is here. Good activated ultimate there. Flash expended by Karosu. Immediately shifts up onto Tamsu, but as Kenzo joins in into the fight, Sarah might go down. There is the first kill here for uh, Silvari Nari. A nice breath of fresh air for their side. A good start, and immediately you do see Chate uh, TPA. This is the UI that I really, really miss from, you know, the games I've witnessed in the past. This is exactly what UI was. You all group up together in the early phases of the game, take advantage and punish uh, members that are out of position. It well, Michael was very, a little bit excited. He was level 4 versus a level 6 Korosu. And therefore, I think the, the confidence came from uh, a bunch of members from USD were nearby. But then again, a, a rather, UI had more members around and therefore they had advantage and because of that they're rewarded with not only a kill but also the dragon as well ocean drake is gonna help in the laning phase in uh especially towards korosu who wants to harass sarah and keep him on a tight leash and tom so and actually everybody else except for for Chata. so it is really 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 good to add to that we were talking about you know oh it's gonna be teletigers having such a strong uh, initiate on their opponents, right? There's going to yes. be a lot of counter mobility against Salvari Nari, but as of this moment, as of this time, pre level 6, pre anything items, there is much more mobility on Salvari Nari compared to their opponents, which is Teletitans. That is absolutely true, and I think they played around the aggressive. Uh... Uh, aggressive comp of USD and it's totally understandable but again if you place them all together uh, all five members of USD it's gonna be very tough to try to escape but look one stack on the stun there's the knock up gonna go back to crit but it's like that's just a little bit of poke gonna get that wave clear for crit towards uh, when the minions crash towards the tower but at this point not a bunch of uh, what do you call this objectives to take on the map so it's a bunch of other trades for us trying to take control of the lane Again, against Sarah, because Sarah's going to be very annoying in the mid game for sure. Yeah, you know, in the past couple of months, we've seen a trend of solo laners actually getting uh, tier 3 boots rather than any other item. And 
to add to that. Oh, it's full of thought. Okay, it's gonna be a three man push onto the bottom lane. Just to add to that, it seems like they're just it's just easier to get a tier three item uh, tier three boots to have a little bit more battle stats. Like if you get sorcery shoes, you get a little bit more magic penetration, berserker greaves, mobility and attack speed, and mercury treads, you get yourself the tenacity and you know magic resist. So Either or, it's actually a really good item to get because you get a little bit more ability, a little bit more chase potential, a little bit of everything, you know? Yeah, and it's like the most optimal back uh, item, especially if you back out early, so might as well uh, get that. But uh, anyway, uh, looks like Kenzo's gonna get the Ignite soon, and uh, they're quite extended, so maybe Tamzo wants to get this done. Oh, they're actually gonna commit. Knock up onto Gresha, chasing it down for Rosa, joining onto the fight. Camille oh. is not yet here. Gets the ultimate from the Grave. Oh. And they want to try to get something out of nothing. How is actually already activated his TP. Oh. Here comes the Camille. This is a little bit too overcommitted on the side of UI and OMG. They immediately lose Tamsu as well as Kanzo. And my, my, my. They overcommitted to it. They lose a little bit. Yeah. Wow. Okay, as it, like for for canon players, that's one of the uh, one of the satisfying things. Like aside from getting a five man slicing maelstrom, it's also once you teleport, everyone's there, so it's just like an easy easy stun uh, alt chain. So at this point of the game, USC really did a good job like turning things around because everyone else from UI was very confident they have uh, the power to chase. They're very highly mobile, and and that's the reason why they were confident. But again, uh, we have the teleport from Pow, which is a good a uh, game changer or a team fight changer, especially when you when everyone else in UI side is going to be low. So I'm pretty sure UI is going to be um, very very careful about that. But you see, um, the Brom was spotted, Crush was spotted, I think, by uh, Kodosu there. So he's going to be playing safe. So uh, right now, bot lane, uh, you can see that the wave is crashing. Um, Sivir is going to be fine. Has really good wave here, so she'll be fine farming under tower while we see Crash already going down in the bottom side. But if this keeps up though, this is this looks like a more UI game to me because they're more aggressive at this point of the game. They keep pushing on with their lead. They know they have enough damage to, to what do you call this, to burst someone down immediately if they pull in all of their damage out of to one person. And that's, this would mean a 4v5 disadvantage if USC decides to contest and try to fight back. And I think that's the reason why uh, this is what you know UI is doing at the moment. And I think it's working if they continue, but it's a ticking time bomb at the same time because I think USC is so much stronger when they're together, and it's so much it's scarier because all of their kids synergize uh, as a team. Yeah, we were talking about this during a drafting phase. There's just a lot more crowd control, or if, if, if ever, all the crowd control is actually in the hands of Teletigers. So, Vary Nari, on their hand, like you were saying, they are using a lot more of their uh, comp to get the pushes into the lanes, but it's not gonna work too well just yet. But the biggest problem is if they wait a bit too long, you said it yourself, it's gonna be so difficult to deal with a Braum, with an Olaf, and with that on the hunt of the Sivir just knocking down onto your door. And you can't really counter engage because the only thing that you can counter engage is maybe the Rakan, and he's not even level 6 yet. He's not level 6 yet. Yep. Then that's the reason why they're pushing on with their lead. They know pressure is level 6. If they decide to fight and defend, then they have no chance. Kenzo now is level 6. This could be their chance, but. Next ultimatum could be activated there. Activates the Glacial Fissure. Alright, chasing it on to Kenzo. Gets the one. Whoa. Find the second. Could be the burn. No, not just yet. Oh, Kenzo will miss. And that is a Matrix Neo moment for you coming out from UI. And here they come. Tiles to enter the front line. Gets the one. Shut it down. Chases. Uh, uh, Taunt it. Blast uh, over the wall. And now Sarah. One uh, versus four. Chasing him. Oh, and he gets the triple kill. Tom to it. Bringing it back. The Graves from downtown. The from the graves, it comes back and they get themselves a dragon. Could be even more with the turrets being exposed. Man, this is what I'm talking about. That was really well made. Let's take a look at the replay there. So everyone else was collapsing. That's four members down at bot side from USD. They thought they could finally eliminate finish off crit, but it was just not enough. The axe wasn't able to hit at all. And then that just bought so much time for the rest of the members to collapse on towards USD. So UI did a great job capitalizing on the fact that they were in between towers. Therefore, they have to pass through the enemy jungle before they can actually retreat safely. And they were punished. They were punished well. UI is reaping what they sowed. And at the moment, they're trying to get more control over the map. But that was, yeah, that was just really good, you know, playing 
from Salvari Nari being able to burn out all of the crowd controls, all of the crucial ultimates from Teletigers and bringing bringing the kills to them on a platter. It, it just you know turned the tides of battle here. Well, not really the entire tide, but yeah. Yeah, I like to correct myself. The tower's already gone when they did the fight, but. Uh, again, they were pushed towards the enemy jungle nonetheless, so the positioning was just very optimal for UI to collapse on certain targets. So uh, UI will take a breather. The gold lead is still in favor of USC nonetheless, even getting the red buff away from Tamsu, but will the punish be here? The punish is could be here. He does have a flash away. Able to escape the clutches of Tamsu there, but this is just... Salvari and I is saying, you can't do that. We are a team that has the threat here and now, and you can't really try to force anything off of our jungle. So while that happens, it's just going to be a uh, tug of four, and well, it seems like the tug of four is slightly on the side of Salvari and I because they have the two dragon advantage. That's your Ocean Drake and Mountain Drake. Mountain Drake is so important, um, especially when you want to try and go siege and take. Um, uh, certain objectives around the map, especially Baron. Well, Rick Harold is still up. Uh, we'll see whether or not they'll try to contest that, but we see already them swapping the lane. We move, we see now Len towards top side, and now Sarah again. Uh, I, I see Camille as most, what do you call this, since you are up against a, uh, uh, a ranged matchup, might as well use your uh, Potential or your damage output uh, on certain roams or in certain skirmishes is quite hard uh, against this Lucian, anyways. But yeah, uh, yeah 31 CS, uh, 30 CS. Wait, look at that. Look Cor at that. <laughs> yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like Camille isn't as strong as she was before because mm. uh, in the previous patches, her damage output with her uh, with her Q has been lowered quite a bit. Her, yes. uh, I think that was precision protocol. So. Even though it seems like she could be like uh, another Irelia for maybe Sarah to use or what have you not, uh, her damage ratio is not really the best at the moment. So she should be, uh, she should, she will be used a bit more by Tele Tigers as an initiator or a utility tool, mm -hmm. and maybe as a pusher of lanes rather than a one v one duelist. But That's we have still yet to see this. Sarah is struggling. You can see that CS 112 to 143. But yes, that is correct, Mundo. So, parang bubabawi na lang siya dito sa mga skirmishes. Wait, wait, was that a hex flash? No, that was a real flash. <laughs> that was a real flash. That was a real flash. We don't want to play flash here. Oh wait, wait, how did I enter the? I thought that. Yeah, I hyped it up too much. So that's not yeah. gonna be a real he, initiation. He didn't have the stopwatch though, and the flash. But I think that was a bit too ballsy, right underneath the turret. So you, you don't really want to force yourself into that. It's it's a it's a sticky situation. It is definitely a sick, sticky situation and as you can see topside is very very low, the first tier tower. Not sure if, if Desire and Kinzo, wait, hold that thought, Sarah? Oh, he's actually gonna commit. There it is. Oh! Gets it in with a slicing mail from Tamsu. Could be in a very difficult situation here, two versus one. But like I said, Sarah is lacking in terms of the damage. Cannot finish off Tamsu, but they still get Korosu in the midst of that. Uh, you know, I actually just noticed this. Chanta is actually pushed into the top lane and Kurosu is in the mid. I just noticed that. Oh my god! What is I happening said with that you? <laughs> you? You know, it, it actually bypassed me. But to follow it up, there's gonna be a fight here. Glacial Fisher activated. Beautiful uh, just spacing from Crit as well as Kenzo. And that will let them survive. But UST, again, showing that they have the CCs, they have the run through and they will just push on into that top lane. Again, showing discipline. That is the name of the game for USD. I mean, there were so many people that were solo in UI. Okay, Protobell being used. Gonna do a little bit trade. The stun will kick in. Land more auto. Protobell back! But it looks like they're gonna have enough and just retreat and reset. But USD managed to get the top side tower. Not gonna push for anything uh, more. But I see pings on the dragon that is... Very important, I'm pretty sure Teletigris is so precious to get that third dragon as UI is just gathering and collecting more yeah. leads. He's gonna spawn in about 10 seconds. He don't he don't have no Zonius Hourglass, he don't have no more lap, and he will get taken down into the bottom lane. That's tier two tier one as well. And well that will just actually oh. open up the dragon, but hold that thought. Here comes the rainy parade. Michael oh. into the front line, they're chasing it. No more ultimate for Chanda, but he does have the Sanguine Pool. They're chasing it, they're looking very strong, and Tamsu is fighting into the back line, hammering it down. Kenzo comes in from the side, chasing them. 
Corosa into the front line, uses the dash. Here comes Terra, has to flash away, gives some space for a land. But is that enough? Looks like it's gonna be a yes. And still, though, Salvarinari into the driver's seat. <gasps> Len almost comes for it. Oh my god, Dasu gets the snipe. And Crit comes in from out of nowhere. There's a slicey melt. So Cow is gonna go and just rip through every single one of them. He gets the cleanup crew. Almost a chase onto Kurosu. Kurosu, Kurosu. Oh my god, one for auto attack. Cow, can he get it? So close. And he does. Oh my god. But still, so Barinari getting that one. That was every Sipper's dream, like everyone oh. was practically low, ricochet, boomerang, everyone's gonna line up supposedly, but before that, that could have happened, she, or rather, Len had to die, but that was super close, uh, Pao came into the fray and then just tried to finish everybody out, he successfully eliminated Tamsu and Korosu there, so that was super close, that was a good trade. And I think uh, the tower wasn't that damaged because UI's powers were so focused on finishing off the members of USD. But that was pretty fun to watch. My heart, man. My heart. <laughs> Wait, where's your heart? <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't handle my excitement there. But you can already see the Salvari Nari definitely in the Emperor's groove here. But. Okay, that's gonna be the first dragon for the Teletigers. TP will be activated there by Korosu. Maybe he'll be your fight here. But it seems like there's not gonna be the case. Could go just to the mid lane as a group. Get that mid tier one. But they have the fear that there's still a lot of engaged from the Teletigers. Yep, Serian, because of the uh, house a last minute entrance, uh, eliminated Tamsu and the other members. They This gave the Teletigers space to get the Air Dragon, the Air Drake. So we'll see. At least they have managed to get something very important, uh, very useful toward the later phase of the game. And uh, at this point, it's uh, all about the resets, and the wave is so in favor of the Teletigers. They're managing the waves very, very well. They have vision. Uh, they have protective vision on their side to make sure there's no sneaky, sneaky things that are happening from you. Watch, because they have the potential to do so. They have a ton of damage, but you see that Tamsu is making his way down. Oh! Down. He actually takes up into the brush. The death rush commits. Axtec ultimatum activated. Can it get Ooh. over the wall? Yes, he can. Oh. Chasing it down with the culling. And hello, ring ring. It's the illusion. Kurosu for the kill. Wow, we wow. That was just so, so risky uh, for Sarah as well. Not being able to spot the other members. So that could have been a 2v1 situation, which that's exactly what happened. But that's a job well done uh, for UI for that punish. I think, I think USD, we said how clean they are. They don't seem so clean anymore. Yeah, they need someone to clean up. Yeah, clean the mess, clean the, the dirt. Okay, where's this going? <laughs> it's not going anywhere. <laughs> Anyways, this is that, that glimmer of hope, that shine, that silver lining that we're looking for from Salvari Nari. But, again, even though this is looking very good for the UI squad, their composition, one mess up, and it could be fatal. Because this composition, even though you're... 5,000, 10,000 gold lead. I have seen this time and time again. If you make that one mistake against a composition that has a ton of CC, it will immediately be taken away from you. So by here on out, Salvarinari has to play close to perfect to get this win. At least I feel that way. Yeah, I totally understand because uh, uh, it's one of those very difficult things as the death timers go uh, insanely long. No, no fear whatsoever. Going in with Kenzo. Just using his ultimate there to secure the mid tier one. I like the aggression here, but now Michael goes in. Where is the other initiator? Here comes from the side, but he's back on the mid tier one. Kenzo could be in a bad position here, but does get the back of that the dash onto his teammate. And they get the safety of that mid tier one, but it's not gonna stop. He becomes here from Swap there. Go there, slide to Nelco. We'll slide through the two members of UI1. My goodness, is happening. Time to go. That's the moment. Gets a couple of kills, but Sarah comes in from the side. Hashtag ultimate into the face of Tamsu. And from zero to hero, it's gonna be USD Teletigers. One more could have gone the ace, but that was a great play from the Tigers. And that is a four for nothing mid tier one. What did I say? What did I say? You said a lot of things. I know. <laughs> but that was just so, so well done by USC. Let's take a look at the replay here. So I thought that was the best entrance ever coming from Trotted. That was the optimal position. But they forgot the fact that the cannons 
10 and ult from Pau can just ruin the back line and just cause chaos. And that's the reason why a lot of people were just so low from USC, but none of them were able to finish off the kill. And that's the reason why USC managed to win that fight. They also do not forget about Sarah's entrance as well. So if ever the slicing maelstrom is not enough, they have Sarah to finish off certain targets in the back lane. Again, UI's composition is very, very squishy. So they have to do things right. If they dish out all of their ultimates, all their key cooldowns, they have to finish off the targets from USC. They did not, that's why its mission failed. Yeah, and I mean, it's basically them having to kind of uh, how do you say it? zigzag onto all of these crowd controls that's being pushed out and Teletigers have done such a great job at kind of domino synchronizing their own Domino ultimate. synchronizing, I yeah, like that term. Right, because they don't pull it out all at the same time. They kind of use it one after mm. the other. They bait out the dashes, they bait out the flashes, and what happens after that? Free kills because no, after all of that uh, movement from UI has been expended, has been exhausted, they can't move anymore. The chase down from UST is just that great. That is absolutely true, you're right. Burning summoner spells, burning uh, the Q ultimates to you know, to win the fight is just very, very key. And that's why you know the late entrance of the uh, sort of late entrance Ray Powell and as well as uh, Sarah, I really thought that was uh, UI's uh, uh, team fight to win. But Rosa here is gonna meet up with uh, Sarah. There's a sweep, we'll see. Gonna escape a little bit more. But look at the pings, look at the, the river side. They are gonna converge here in the Dragon Pit. We'll see who's gonna get that Mountain Drake. Uh, double Mountain Drake on this. On uh, UI's composition, is gonna be hella scary. Yeah, they can really use that for, you know, pushing down turrets. They're using the culling here to space out. Who's gonna get the flash? Oh my! Oh, they actually get it. Okay, this is gonna be fine. And Triple Tomato will take down two. Take out the Dragon here for the side of UI. But at what cost? They lose two. They actually actually lose more. As Barosu also flashes over the wall. Cannot escape the stun from the concussive blow. And while was that happening, the fadeaway shot, the fadeaway kill onto Crit. A four for nothing. They get the Dragon, but was it worth it? Yes, it wasn't uh, worth it. They get the dragon, but USD was just uh, waiting for the correct opportunity because everyone else was just forcing. Uh, he was trying to damage the uh, dragon there, and now they have gotten their rewards. They've managed to get uh, three kills and as well as Baron. And right now, USC, when I said, oh, they aren't clean anymore, it seems to me, uh, one of the things that I said previously is that, okay, when they're complete as five, that's the time that they get to shine. And again, that is what's happening for, for the Teletigers. They, they have an amazing job, uh, they have an amazing uh, sort of synergy there, not only with their composition, but their, but their, uh, their, their com comms. Oh, comms. Their yeah. comms, their communication. So uh, I really like uh, what the Teletigers is doing in game number three. Yeah. It just goes to show that they have been through thick and thin, they have gone through hell and back, uh, mm. whatever you want to call, like being able to just hurdle through all that pain, and now you can see that their efforts, their hardships are uh, showing fruition in this best of five finals. It's, it looks so good for Selvaria at the start, but now that we've, now that, you know, uh, Teletigers are expanding our, or uh, biting gnawing at that weakness of the composition of Salvari and Ari, it seems very easy for them, very simple for them to kind of finish this game out, but I don't know, maybe there's still something that Salvari and Ari can bring to the table. We'll have to see. I mean, they have a, a lot of uh, strong damage out there, uh, of course, and it's going to be very helpful in making fast pickoffs, like sure pickoffs, not just we could have killed them, yeah. but we will kill them uh, yeah. if they make a mistake. And, and right now we see Tamsu just trying to clear out the waves here. That's three people with the Baron buff and the one cannon boy, one big cannon boy. But that's going to be eliminated easily by Tamsu. Man, talking about cannon, man. 616 on that beast. Can't really be dealt by a shot at all. So he has to uh, forfeit his tower in the top as well as the bottom. They're really using this uh, Baron to its full fruition. They're getting all that... Uh, that value from the Baron buff. So this is going to be a little bit of a uh, driver's seat for Teletigers. And, well, Salvari and I have to wait just a little bit before they can maybe plan a comeback. It's going to be difficult, but they just have to slow the game. Like, wait for the Baron, not be too antsy. Uh, maybe try to make a pick. But again, the key members to start a fight is Pao here, and as well as Len on, on the hunt alongside with Michael. So again, we did mention they're very strong uh, as fives, but if they manage Ouch. to split them up, 
It's still a little bit difficult, just to make the uh, the Baron expire for sure. But if they can make a swift kill, which I think they can, because they have a ton of damage, uh, they can slow the game even more and perhaps find a better opportunity to push the wave and get that reset, get that breathing. It's gonna be difficult. Tier threes are almost always uh, not a breeze through for a lot of you know a lot of games, but because of the composition of Salvari Nari, they only have again that one guy who can. Uh, kind of choke the push of uh, Tunnel Tigers, that being the, the Rakan, it's going to be very difficult. Sorry, uh, I, I, I was distracted by if, if he completes the Rabadons, I think he can just, just flash in or photo belt in and activate the ult and it's just, whoa, it's just a ton of damage for sure. Yeah. It's going to be scary. Yeah. Okay, double rods already in the inventory. Still no Rabadons yeah. just yet, but uh, already had already been effective. Uh, Bao has already been super scary without the double route, so. I mean, yeah, Ken is such a small guy. <laughs> I mean, those two big rods, it's gonna. <laughs> you don't really expect it to have. <laughs> oh, wait, there you go! He actually just goes in! Like you said, he's not gonna be fearing anything with those two really, really large rods. Goes in, gets the one on the cancel, and this might be it. Tom's has gone down. Arguably the strongest member right now of UI, Ooh. and they just break through all around town. Girls is down for the count. That's gonna Ooh. be the ace. Sarah will be taken away because of that turret, but I think it's already over. You gotta call that Chi Chi. Yeah, they did an amazing job. USC was just so clean. I mentioned game number three. Maybe they're not clean, but when they joined uh, as five, they just really showed great synergy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with this last Nessus turret, the Nexus exposed, the auto attacks are abundant from the side, from the ones from the zone, your winners, USD Teletigers! <laughs> what a game, what a game. The champions of our Akhet Arena National Finals 2019. Uh, Alright, that's gonna be about it. I am just, like, I, I don't know, I was... How do I say this? Cobb smacked at what happened there. From seeing seeing Salvari and Ari, was like, oh, they're looking pretty good in the early game. But then, what yeah, happened yeah. in the mid game? Like, early game was <laughs> one of the things that UI was just super strong uh, at. But USD was uh, really took everything into account and just made sure that even though, okay, our, US, our USD, our early game isn't as strong. Uh, from uh, at game number three, but when we join us five, we just complete the puzzle and then just really take this championship. And they took it with 